Just good to shut them up when you can start. Okay, um, everybody, uh, please sit down. Uh, we're going to start with our next talk. And uh, I'll hand the mic now to Zishan, which will actually do his presentation. Hello, everyone. Uh, I have a bit of a headache, nothing to do with last night. As I don't know what it is, every first time it happens. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, something called GDP, but before I get into that, I'll have to introduce a bit of background. Um, so first we talk a bit about um, Jenny Wee. Um, by the way, my name is Zishan. I didn't introduce myself, sorry. Um, and I work for a company called um, Pelagicor. It's a small company in, um, in Sweden, uh, which works for IVI systems mainly. And um, we are now part of a greater Luxoft uh, company. Um, yeah, Jenny Wee. Um, it's all about open source IVI. So, um, uh, when people were making IVI systems, um, they realized that they can um, make use of a lot of open source components out there uh, that are already there and they're uh, well established and uh, stable and working and everything, so why, why not make use of them? And uh, while they were doing it, a lot of companies realized that they were using the exact same components in the very similar or exactly same way even. So why not combine forces and uh, create an alliance to standardize those components and to create more components that are also standardized across uh, industry and um, yeah and uh, just about combining uh, the uh, forces um, so um, one of the first thing that came out was a compliance uh, process of Genevi so Genevi is the um, the alliance that was formed uh, uh, of many com uh, mot uh, automobile companies and it's not just OEMs but also uh, some companies that work uh, with OEMs, for OEMs and stuff um, and uh, silicon manufacturers as well and um, compliance is a process in which you um, you have a system and you want to uh, show that it's uh, um, using industry standards and it is compliant to, to Genevieve's uh, standards um, so you, um, you, you have this process with uh, which you go with Genevi and you you get certified your IBI system that it's it's compliant with Genevi. Um, in Genevi we have um, abstract components defined like you you will have some APIs that uh, you don't have to implement in the same way as uh, we will have in a reference implementation, but you can have completely different implementation. But as long as the API is the same, it's your system is compliant. But then we have specific components as well that it has to be the exact same component, otherwise it's not. Compliant compliant. Um, but there is, it leaves a lot of room for, uh, for changes, for improvements, for, for differences, um, and it's very, um, um, very open. Um, and um, one of the uh, products of uh, this process is uh, something called base, we call baseline. Um, it's, as the name suggests, it's the base of all the system. It's, um, it's a core component, and it's in, in the form of a Yocto layer called Meta IBI. Um, uh, it's, it's just the basic components um, that you need for IBI system, and uh, everything in this uh, in this layer, in this Yocto layer, is compliant. So, if you want to build a Genevieve compliant system, it's very easy to just take this this uh, layer and build on top of that, and it makes your life much more easier. Um, you don't have to, but. Uh, um, and since baseline is just the base, it, it, it does uh, provide you with a bootable image that you can boot and uh, do things with it. And um, uh, but uh, it's it's not much. So Genevi uh, development platform uh, GDP is uh, something we built on top. It's a reference implementation. It's Genevi compliant system. It's a uh, almost a complete system, and it's good for demos. It's it's not good for you can't actually put it in a car. It's it's not good for that, but it's a very good reference implementation and it's very good to uh, get you started with the development of, an, uh, of a Genevi compliant um, uh, IVI system. Um, it, it's composed of two Yocto layers. It's, um, the first one is uh, Meta Genevi uh, Dev, which adds um, the missing layer from um, Meta uh, from Baseline. Uh, baseline just gives you command line, for example, and there's no, um, for example, um, UI in there. Um, but uh, Meta 
many we have ads uh, HMI uh, the the main UI in an IVI system we, we in automotive world it's usually called um, HMI so it adds an HMI it's it's just a demo uh, and it's um, it also has a few apps that um, that show off many of the our APIs in the on the system. Um, and um, Genevi Dev Platform, it's, it's the whole platform. It uh, combines all the needed layers to, to create these um, images. So you, we have images for various targets um, available. And of course, uh, more can be added. And you can, uh, you can change the layers to, uh, to add more boards uh, if you need to. Um, to give you a better idea, I put a picture here. <laughs> so um, you can see the baseline. Uh, uh, it has uh, standard interfaces and individual software components that are standardized. Um, and compliance is all about this baseline. And on top of that, we add the Genevi development platform, and it combines the whole thing into a nice demoable, um, um, bootable image. Um, we also have tools around it. I'll talk about that later. Uh, software development environment is one of them. Um, what does it offer mainly? Well, uh, firstly, it's like the established uh, open source components that are used in many IVI and embedded systems that are there on GDP already. So you don't have to put it there. It's already there for you. Um, other than that, we have some uh, uh, IVI specific tools that we have uh, put on top. Firstly, um, this is not exactly IVI specific, but it's GDB specific. Um, we have something called software development environment. Um, it's it's a completely uh, standalone environment. It's a bootable image. Um, you can um, you can download and you boot it in a in the virtual box, and um, you have the whole environment set up. You have all the tools needed. I'll show you a picture. It's, it, can, it might tell you a lot. I'm not sure how much of this you can see, um, but that's how it looks like. It's a bootable Ubuntu um, image. Um, it um, has all the usual development tools like GCC and all. Um, apart from that, there is also um, debugging uh, tools um, and an Eclipse environment in there uh, for doing development. And um, uh, one of the things it adds is um, a log and trace tool. Um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a pretty standard tool, this uh, DLT. It's uh, used uh, in automobile uh, industry quite a lot. And um, we have it already on, on, on board, so you don't have to do anything. It's, um, and it also sends the logs and everything to the network, so you, um, you can use the SD, um, SDE. Um, combined with uh, GDP running on a board, and you can uh, get traces of what's going on on the on GDP system, and um, yeah, do all the debugging you need to do. We have uh, something called Audio Manager. Um, uh, you have some. You have uh, audio servers like Pulse Audio. You have Jack and various others that do pretty similar stuff. And mainly, it's about uh, routing of audio. Um, there are some other things too, but mainly it's about uh, audio routing. And this audio manager. Um, uh, firstly, it abstracts those um, interfaces, so you have just one interface in IVI, and you, you have to care about, and uh, you don't need to care if it's uh, uh, Jack or uh, Pulse Audio or whichever uh, audio server you're using. Um, you can even change it later on. You, if you're developing a, developing a product, you say, I'll, I'll use Pulse Audio, but later you change your mind and you want another system. So this, this enables that. And also it adds some um, uh, IVI-specific um, use cases on top. Um, not going to get into details. Um, there is um, something called Common API. It's something architects really love. Uh, developers are a bit divided about it, <laughs> but architects really love it because uh, it enables them. Uh, it's a tool that translates uh, Franca IDL uh, specification into uh, real code that you can use to uh, to create Dbus services or Dbus uh, proxy um, code, um, but also not just Dbus. It uh, um, can also do something called some IP. Uh, it's um, it's used a lot in IVI as far as I know, um, and um, so you can translate into code for for handling some IP as well. So it's a pretty pretty neat tool for. 
for designing uh, interfaces and then translating them in code. Um, we have a system for persistence. So if you are um, in a car and you're, uh, you're listening to some song, for example, and you uh, turn off your car and you turn it on back, you want uh, the system to come back for, to the same state it was in, not, not uh, go to some other state, uh, initial state. So uh, persistence is a system that uh, yeah, makes it very easy. It's an API that apps can use to, to um, uh, have their um, current state uh, persistent and also for the um, uh, HMI to uh, save its state and be able to restore from, from the last state if uh, it goes off or something. Um, uh, we have uh, something called remote vehicle interaction. It's um, it's pretty complicated stuff, and it's a lot of things involved. But I'll give you some examples. Like um, if you are um, uh, about to go out on a, on a long journey, and it's really cold, or and it's or it's very hot, and you want your to set up your car so that you don't go into a freezing car or a very hot car, so you um, you can, you know, from your phone or an iPad, you can already set the environment of your car, like start up the uh, heating system or ventilation or whatever, um, uh, five minutes before you go in. And this um, remote vehicle interaction, these are, this is a framework that makes that possible for you uh, to do that, to implement that in the car. Um, also, um, it, uh, sends, it can send out information to, to servers uh, about, for example, if there's congestion in the area or something, so it can send to the server and then the server can um, uh, handle that in some way. I'll, I'll talk about an example, a real-world example later, about how that's useful. Um, there's other examples of this as well, like, for example, some peer-to-peer um, networking, if you, uh, you have your uh, media on your uh, phone and you get into your car and you just want to um, have your media play from your phone on the car, uh, car stereo system. So um, you will use this system to implement uh, that sort of use case. Uh, there's quite a few use cases that this can be used for. Um, but, uh, and we have this um, framework on our, on, in GDP already, so it makes it very easy for you to implement in a GDP-based uh, IBI system. Um, software over the air, it's very related to, um, to RBI, but it's kind of different. It's at least implemented uh, separately uh, in GDP. Um, you, um, nowadays, a lot of uh, new cars are, are doing that. They, uh, they want the system to be updatable um, over the air. You, you don't, a user shouldn't have to go to a garage to get their software system updated. They, that should be just automatic. It should just work. And it works already in many automobiles. And in future, it will, you will see a lot more of that. And this is a system that makes it possible. Um, it's uh, currently um, our um, SOTA client is uh, written in Rust, but it's being uh, ported into C++. We, we ran into some build issues with, with uh, Rust uh, layers at some point, so I guess it's a good thing. Um, uh, we have um, also spins, like as I said, G GDP is just a layer on top of baseline, so you can add, remove uh, things from it, uh, but still be compliant to, um, to GenEV. So you can have a GenEV compliant system, uh, but not use exactly GDP. Um, so it's, it's GDP is just to make things easy for you. Uh, but um, we officially want to support uh, people who want to have such systems and have um, them available so people can have different software components if they want to. And currently we only have um, one such um, uh, spin, it's called Qt Automotive Suit. It's actually maintained by um, uh, my colleagues and um, developed by them as well. It's actually pretty awesome. If you, um, if you are for some reason not satisfied with GDP, please do have a look at this. It's pretty, pretty neat stuff. Um, Future. Uh, I'm really sorry. I'm going really fast, but I don't have a lot of time, so um, and I have to go through a lot. Um, uh, yeah, we have a um, project now started with uh, together with the Nevada Center for Advanced Mobility um, uh, to um, to make use of the RVI system of um, of G GDP uh, to um, report. Um, 
data from the car to centralized servers and to from back from, back from the server to the car to make uh, s uh, different various kind of uh, decisions to enable something called we call smart city um, it will be a pilot project in um, in las vegas i think and um, uh, the point is that uh, ped uh, it will be informing pedestrians. Uh, there is a lot of pedestrian accidents in, in that city, so they really want to make it safer for pedestrians. And um, they will get data, for example, on their phones or something that, okay, there is a lot of congestion here and they should avoid which areas they should be avoiding, which areas they should be routing from. And the same for cars, like if there's a lot of uh, congestion uh, somewhere, they can avoid uh, those areas or they can avoid areas where there is a lot of pedestrians crossing so to make it safer for pedestrians and also it, you don't want to go over a pedestrian so it's good for uh, the driver as well um, so there's a lot of the, these interactions going on to make it safer for everyone um, to, um, uh, to to drive and to go around the city I'm pretty pretty uh, excited about this um, so Google summer of code um, it, it's it's a project it's I think most of you already know about it, that Google gives a lot of money to, for students to work on various open source projects. And this is one of our, our, our we want to participate in Google Summer of Code, and not just to get some work done, uh, but also to, um, uh, to, um, to welcome more community uh, to, to work on, on GDP. Because there's still a lot of people who don't know that we are completely open source. It's a completely open source project. Uh, and they are welcome to, to work with us, uh, even if they don't work for car companies. Um, so we want to change that uh, impression. And one of the ways we will do it is we, we have applied for Google Summer of Code. I don't know if it will get accepted or not. You can never know. But I hope we do. And we will have some students working this summer for, for GDP. And we can extend and uh, expand our community, uh, that would be really cool. Um, uh, we um, have a browser on, on GDP already, but it's not so good, it's so not so nice, it's not pretty complete at least. So, excuse me. Uh, we, uh, there's um, Egalia uh, guys working on this. Um, they, they are make, porting Chromium to, to GDP and making it work. They actually have gone quite a long way in last one month. They started only a month ago, and I was expecting this to, to be kind of integrated in months later, but uh, they were pretty fast, and I was really impressed by their, by their speed. So um, there's already a demo, and they, they have a blog post where they explain how to download and get it working on GDP. So um, it's pretty good. Um, hoping, really looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully, in a month or so, it will be integrated in GDP. Um, fingers crossed, <laughs> of course. Um, Oh, this is um, the most difficult thing to explain, but I'll try. Um, so uh, we have system D um, on, on GDP and that manage the whole system and the life cycle of the system. Um, but uh, in an IVI system, we know we need a lot more. And usually in also in Im other embedded systems as well, you, um, for example, if you have um, an app uh, that is running, as I mentioned before, and uh, you, uh, the system shuts down. You wanted to get back to the same app in the same state that it was in, and life cycles. Uh, the, there is a component we we will imp be implementing um, in the next few months that will make it. Um, well, the component is already there. We just need to mostly integrate it with the rest of the uh, the UI and everything to make it actually work on on GDP. Um, uh, so it will uh, it will ensure that system loads in the correct um, order in the correct um, and it loads the last application the last context user context um, yeah uh, pretty complicated stuff <laughs> um, there's um, a lot of other things involved too that I have, I'm not mentioning here um, such as uh, user management and user seats and those kind of stuff. Um, but that, that needs another talk, I think. And I think next year I'll have a talk about just this specifically. <laughs> and by that time, we would have it completely integrated and implemented. So it would be cool. Um, we have uh, location-based services, uh, basically just where you are, uh, where uh, your uh, route, and where should you go and stuff. Um, 
uh, and it, it also comes, uh, there is another component involved which is called fuel stop advisor that tells you if you're low on fuel and when you should be getting into a fuel uh, station and it should already, like if the fuel is really low, it should, it can tell you that, that warn you or already inform you that you really need to go to this petrol station like right now or uh, you will you'll be uh, going out of fuel soon. Um, so that's part of it, and uh, uh, some of these components are already part of GTP, but not, it's not completely integrated. There's some people working on this. So hopefully in the next few months, we will also see uh, more location-based services and some uh, UI, demo UIs on top that demonstrates how um, various APIs can work and uh, for people who want to use these. Um, uh, the UI, as I mentioned, it's just a demo, uh, so it's not supposed to be put on in a car uh, system as is. Um, so the UI is not that great, but I think we can make it uh, slightly better. And there was um, a reiteration of the UI, which is, and it made it much, much better looking, and it's really cool looking now. But it, it can really use some, some improvement still. Um, hopefully in the next uh, few months that this is also going to be happening, and we will have a UI that is really good for a demo. Uh, the uh, RVI subsystem we have, it's, uh, it's um, written currently in Erlang. Um, the only problem there is that it's not re really good for um, putting in embedded systems. It's like consumes a lot of space and a lot of memory. So um, those guys have written now, um, the guys who implemented RVI have written a, a, a library, a C library, that makes it much more lightweight and it does the exact same thing. So um, that's, uh, that's going to be integrated soon. Um, as I mentioned, not many people know or think that we are a completely open source project and we really, really want and need more contributions. So if you want to work with us, it's, it would be awesome. Uh, we actually have one guy um, already, uh, Cheng Yok. Um, he uh, works uh, quite, a, quite a bit with, uh, with us. He's actually one of the maintainers of, of the GDP layer. So he has commit rights and everything. And he does not work for Genevi. He does not work for any of our I think companies, as far as I know, but he's a completely open source, uh, random guy who just uh, want, was interested in, uh, in IBI systems, and he's really, really good. He he's, does a good job, um, and he he helps out. So, um, if anyone of you if you're interested, you can also be the next Cheng Yok. Um, we had a team transition, I thought I'd briefly mention. Um, previously, it, um, the project, the GDP project, was maintained by a team from CodeThink. They did an awesome job, and I really would want to thank them, if any one of them is here, uh, for, for their work. And uh, it was a really smooth transition they, they did uh, when, we, when the uh, team was transferred to, um, the, the work was transferred to a team at my uh, workplace called Plachikor. And, um, I'll be the lead developer, and uh, there's uh, two more people working with me, uh, uh, Taha, Mohammed, and uh, uh, Victor. What's your last name again? <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Okay, I can't pronounce his last name, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's a Swedish, man. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, I think I have now seven minutes for for questions. The question is that if Genevieve supports Edisys. Uh, since I haven't heard of it, I don't think so. <laughs> so, hi, originally you said that uh, the software over the air was done in uh, Rust. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. You could have waited five minutes. Um, sorry, the question was that uh, we read it in Rust, and then... Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, the question is that we, um, why are we moving uh, SOTA client from Rust uh, to C++? Um, it's not our really decision. It's an expert group who, who develops it. And they, they went into a few problems with it because it's not just for GDP, the, the SOTA client. It's uh, meant for other systems they work on as well for their clients. So um, the main reasons they told me were uh, the Rust binaries were too big. And um, sorry, forgot the second reason. But yeah, yeah, I'll let you know later on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, if anybody still has questions, just come and talk with Zishan and do that outside, so we can continue with the next talk. Thank you.